Hey guys, we are going to find the inverse of this function. Okay. Super exciting things happening right now. Okay. The first thing I like to do is do just like a quick rough sketch of what this graph looks like. Okay. If you need a review on how to graph square root graphs, I'll link a video for you. But remember we have our parent graph. This means I'm going to shift to the right. Sorry. <clears throat> I meant left to the left five, one, two, three, four, five, and up four, one, two, three, four. Okay. And then this isn't going to be perfect. I'm not finding all the points, but I do know my graph will look something like this. Okay. And I know that because I've graphed lots of square root graphs in the past. Okay. It may not necessarily cross right at seven. I'm just getting an idea of what this looks like. Okay. Because whenever we are looking for an inverse of a function, first, we want to make sure that our graph actually has an inverse. Okay. So for a function to have an inverse, it has to be what we call one to one. Okay. If you want a full video on this, I will link one in the corner for you. But basically what that means is to be a function, we have to pass the vertical line test, right? For a function to be one to one, it has to also pass the horizontal line test. Okay. Meaning I don't, um, cross two points when I do my horizontal line test. Okay. So this one is good. Most likely, if your teacher tells you to find the inverse, it'll probably be one-to-one -one already, but it is a good idea to get in the habit of checking, okay? So we are good here. This one has an inverse. From here, to find my inverse, the first step I'm going to do is change this f of x to a y, just to kind of make our math easier for a second, okay? So I'm going to have y equals the square root of x plus 5 plus 4, okay? The next thing I'm going to do to find this inverse is I'm going to take my X and Y variable and swap them. Yes, you heard this right. It is crazy. Crazy things are happening. We're going to have X equals Y plus five plus four. Now, if you are thinking why this is weird, let me show you really fast. Okay. So on this graph here, I know I have the point negative five, four, right? Okay, that means the inverse of this graph has the point 4, negative 5. Okay, the X and Y are switched for every point on this graph. Okay, so one way to find it is to switch them in our equation, and then we're going to solve for Y again. Okay, so to get Y alone, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So I end up with X minus four equals the square root of Y plus five. Okay. Now you might be thinking, oh, subtract the five, but I got to get rid of the square root first. Okay. So the opposite of a square root is to square, right? So I'm going to square both sides. Okay. The squared and the square root cancel out. So I am left with X minus four squared on this side equals y plus five. Okay. Now I can subtract that five from both sides and I end up with, I'm going to write the y first. I'm just swapping them so that y is first because that's how I'm more used to seeing equations, but I'm not changing the values or anything. Okay. So I end up with y equals x minus four squared minus five. Okay. That is what I believe my inverse is, okay? I'm going to hurry and graph it and make sure. And also, we're not going to leave that as a Y. We're going to switch it, and I'll show you in just a second, okay? So for these to be inverses of each other, they are reflected over the Y equals X line, which is a line that just cuts this guy straight. Well, not really straight. Diagonal. <laughs> down the middle. Oh guys, pretend like those dots or dashes are a little better. Okay. So you can think of that dotted line as a mirror or also think about if this was like wet paint, right? And then I folded along this line, bam, stamped it. Think about what the graph would look like on this side. That is what our inverse should look like. Okay. So let's go ahead and graph this. Okay. So I know when I have a squared like that, I'm going to have a parabola. So I'm kind of thinking for half a second, uh, is that really going to be the inverse? Well, let's see. Okay. So I know it's going to be a, par a parabola. 
If you need a reminder on how to graph parabolas, guess what? I'll link a video in the corner for you. So this parabola is shifted to the right four, one, two, three, four, and down five, one, two, three, four, five. Hey, look, that's that point that we said should be on it. So I'm feeling good for a second. But then, again, this doesn't have to be a perfect graph, but I know parabolas look something like this, right? I'll do it in pencil. Okay, right? But this has an extra little guy here, right? I'm like, okay, this feels good. That's looking like a mirror, but what about this, right? Well, this is where restricting our domain comes in. Don't roll your eyes. It's not too bad, right? Basically, when I look at this parabola here, I just want this side, right? If this guy's gone, that's looking like a mirror, right? Or that fold stampy thing I was talking about, right? So we only want the right side, okay? So basically, if I look at my x-axis, right, my dot is at 4, negative 5. So I only want the x values equal to 4 or greater, right? I don't want these other guys. So my inverse is not going to just be this. It's going to be this, where x is greater than or equal to 4. I don't want those other guys, right? Those aren't an inverse of this function, okay? So I'm going to erase my pencil real fast. So if I were to graph this parabola with these restrictions where I only graph where x is, oh, there we go, where x is greater than or equal to 4, it's going to look something like that, right? Now, my drawing isn't perfect, right? They're not perfect <laughs> reflections of each other with my graphing, but if we had found each point and everything, they would be a perfect reflection over that y equals x for us, okay? But the last thing I need to do, you might get docked if you forget to do this, just so you know, is we need to change this y, right? We're going to change it to f inverse of x, okay? You have that little negative one there, equals, and then we have the x minus 4 squared minus 5, and then remember your restriction, okay? And that is my answer. Guys, oh gosh, let me just shift that on accident. Okay, guys, thank you for doing that with me. <laughs> If you need some more inverse videos, I've got lots. I will link a playlist for you. Thanks.